All right, I think we're live. We'll give a second for folks to join in. Uh, let me pull up the chat here. Here we go. Uh, Levi, your question about are we restricted to simply the patron units in this one? No, probably not. The only rule I've got for myself, because now with the game uh, in the uh, state that it's in, and there was another update today before today's episode, um, mostly some fixes and things like that. But uh, the only the, the main thing now is because we're playing on the highest difficulty uh, it's going to be pretty difficult, especially with, a, with an aggressive union. Uh, the only thing I'm going to limit myself to is I'm only going to recruit um, to keep up with the union. Uh, and I don't mean even odds because that was never the case. I just I don't want it to get to the point where the union so overwhelms me with numbers that I just have no chance at all. So uh, I will be recruiting additional units uh, as needed. But for now, no, just just the patron units. So. Uh, yeah, can we see the state of the CS Navy? Uh, there isn't much of one so far. I'll show you what I've got so far. Uh, I do have four squadrons. The James River Squadron, which is over there in the James River right uh, near the Chesapeake Bay, just has two ships in it with six guns each. North Carolina Squadron has six ships each with two guns. Uh, we've got the Savannah Squadron, just two ships. I formed a Mississippi River Squadron, which is going to be my primary defense against the Union Navy that's coming down. Uh, and that one has a bunch of ships that we're currently building, uh, mostly paddle steamer gunboats, some double enders. We don't have the ability to build things like ironclads yet. We don't have that technology. Um, so we're queuing up. Most of that squadron hasn't been built yet. Um, so we do have other ships here in the harbor that we can add to those ships. Uh, we don't have the ability to build things like frigates and stuff like that yet. So that's obviously something. Um, at some point, I want to be able to build some um, like blockade runners. I'm just not at the place where I can do that yet. We have one available technology um, or project that we could fund, which is Cotton as King. I'm going to hold off for now. We've already upgraded that one once so far spam brigs into flotillas of nine ships not a bad idea um so we are in the process of recruiting you can see the state of that right now Fifty-six thousand men in the field but i've got a ton uh, of units that are in the queue that haven't been recruited yet the army of tennessee will be about twenty-one thousand strong when it's all done i didn't recruit all three thousand man armies this time or uh, brigades this time because I wanted to be able to stretch the number of units I could recruit a little further. And then we can allow for them to get built up over time from uh, available recruits in the field. So um, three days away from that unit, 12 and 12 for that. So in about two weeks, the Army of Tennessee will be up to 21,000 men. Uh, the biggest artillery units we can build right now only have six guns in them. Uh, we don't have the, t the projects unlocked to get up to full size uh, units yet. So... Can you change the head of the CSA Army? Unless they've changed it, no, I cannot. Um, I don't know how that gets changed if it gets changed by me promoting someone. So let's say I promote uh, Robert E. Lee uh, to Lieutenant General. That would probably make him the head of the Army. Uh, but right now, no. Patrick, what's going on? Welcome. Yeah, YouTube will auto de default the resolution for you, so definitely check it. Um, I haven't shown the order of battle yet. I, I usually do an order of battle video for all the patrons once I've recruited all the patron units, which I've got about 10 more to recruit, and we'll get them all. Tom, you're right. It is uh, There's a learning curve to this game. So, uh, Army of Northern Virginia will be 24,000 strong. Uh, we're waiting on some units here two days away on the Fighting tar Tigers. We've got some others that are about two weeks away. Um, Army of Shenandoah has pretty well got everyone that I've recruited so far. Western Army, we're waiting on a few. Army of the Northwest, which is under AP Hill, um, is just getting started. So uh, let's go ahead and speed things up to 20x. Uh, the Army of the Northwest is currently engaged with 
McClellan's Department of the Ohio, but Northwest Army only has a thousand men in it, and I can't control it right now. Union just got two-year contracts, so obviously that's going to be a big deal. I just realized I need to turn down the in-game sound, so give me a second while I do that, or else once we get into a battle, it's going to be super loud on you guys. There we go. I think we should be good now. Uh, my avatar general, I don't think I've actually recruited yet. Uh, I do have the other guy I created, uh, Napoleon. Julius Caesar Napoleon is a division commander in the Army of Northern Virginia. Is there a general called West Brom? No. Uh, Calvin, yeah, I'll get to yours probably, if not during this episode, then before the next episode. Uh, Professor what? I will do that. Um, all right, so where can I put myself? I'm thinking maybe uh, the Army of Tennessee is a good place to drop myself to start. Uh, we're going to replace Earl Van Dorn. There I am. Looks a little like me. I'm a captain at the moment, so uh, assigning me is obviously going to promote me up to colonel in charge of a division. Stats aren't that great so far. Those are going to have to be built up through battle and experience. I wish I could grow the facial hair that men had in the Civil War. I just am not capable of that at all. So it's July 1st of 1861. Union's up to 141,000 men in the field now. They're going to start overwhelming me with these numbers pretty quickly. Um, Army of Tennessee, just 16,000 men. That Army of the Mississippi doesn't have quite that many yet. Disaster at Fort Smith. Where is that? That's in Arkansas. I think Fort Smith's in Arkansas. Let's pause for a second and go over there. Yeah, so he took Fort Smith. My Western Army is up here. Their readiness is pretty good. So we're going to send Hardy down here to go after his Department of the West, which has 16,000 men. Um, where's Hardy at on his manpower? And is he even the general I want in charge? No, he really isn't. He's got a lot of fame, but not a lot of skill, unfortunately. Is there anybody at all that I could put in command of that army that's any better? John Hunt Morgan's not bad. He's got three in cunning. You know what? We're going to give John Hunt Morgan that army. So, uh, does that mess the readiness up, I wonder? No, it doesn't. So we're waiting on them. How long before they get 20 days, three days? So hopefully by the time they hit combat, high pressure brigade will be there. That'll give them another 2,000 men. I will show you recruiting here, Sean, shortly. Because uh, I'll recruit some more units pretty soon. Uh, Professor what? How do we get Kentucky and Missouri to secede? Two things. Uh, we have to get all of the armies, the enemy armies, out of those states. It'll show you right here. I'll show you. Uh, capture Kentucky. In order to get Kentucky to secede, we have to capture Louisville and defeat all of the Union armies in Kentucky. So I guess they don't have to be driven out. We have to just defeat them. Uh, and then Missouri, the same way. We have to capture St. Louis and defeat the armies in Missouri. So we're going to come down here and retake Fort Smith. I've lost track of the army that was there. All right, we got our next unit just arrived. Union's up to 150,000. We're at 78,000. As long as we can keep within about 50% of his number, I think we'll be okay. Let's see what's happening in the east over here. So I've got the Army of the Shenandoah and the Army of Northern Virginia right next to each other. The Department of Pennsylvania has got 11,000 men. So I think I'm going to go ahead and send Joe Johnston with the Army of the Shenandoah back up to Winchester to guard that area there. Um, A.P. Hill's still waiting on most of his 10,000 men. Uh, I'm waiting for some better ships, Sarge. I have a limited amount of resources that I can use for building ships, so I'm kind of waiting. We're about to finish Diplomacy 2. Uh, I don't think we have any new weapons. Most of my units have at least Springfield muskets. I've got a few that don't even have that. Uh, but let's see. We have nothing else available right now. So we do have some weapon orders that are out. Uh, oh, here we go. We have some available things we can recruit here. 
Uh, we can get armored gunboats with 8-inch cannon. Uh, cast artillery, which would give us Napoleons, which is huge. Uh, that would be really helpful to have. Recruitment offices. Not sure that's what I need right now. Uh, and rebore muskets. I'm thinking cast artillery or armored gun. I'm going to go cast artillery. So that's going to get us the ability to get, among other things, Napoleons. Uh, we don't have any yet. So let's go into weapons and let's place an order. My goodness, even 32 of them is going to take half a year to order. Oh, if you send them to Winchester, maybe Uhtred or the Saxons can help you. Oh, sorry, different timeline. Um, let's order up some Jameses as well. Boy, these are taking forever to order. That's not a helpful situation. I'm going to order 64 12-pounder Napoleons. Let's go ahead and order some howitzers too, just so I have them. The reboard muskets are, are decent, but I've already, uh, through one of the things that I unlocked at the beginning of the game, I've already got the ability for like uh, Springfield rifled muskets, so I'd rather have those. Hey, King Toby, what's going on? All right, uh, recruitment situation. We're up to almost 80,000 now, so that's good news. Let's see how the uh, oversimplified video is doing over on the other channel. Pretty good. All right, 7,000 views in the first 40 minutes. We'll take that. That's awesome. Is there a way to speed up the orders? Yeah, order the minimal amount possible. Uh, that's the only thing you can do, unless there's a policy that eventually comes available which is possible there might be a policy or a project that allows me to speed up the orders down the road but we don't have it yet um this increases cotton production i don't think that's necessary at the moment i think we'll hold off on anything else right now on those let's see if we can get ourselves into combat somewhere oh something's happening here all right, Army of the Shenandoah is arriving in Winchester. There, we got Diplomacy 2. Where do we stand with the British? We're at 30% toward British intervention. A long way to go. There are weapon efficiency projects, project, Steve. Okay, I thought there might be. Okay, uh, the Free Trade Act will give me a 10 bo bonus to European relations. I don't think I need to go there yet. Uh, Diplomacy 3 will help with European relations 2. Industrialization 2 might be the way that I go here right now. Um, I don't know. Since we've got a live stream, what do you guys think? Uh, I think our current credit rating means we don't have to go funding quite yet. Uh, I could do Military 1, which allows financing of further military projects, including introduction of new weapons and ship types. So maybe that's the way to go. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's throw up a little poll here, shall we? Uh, it's going to go off of the screen here for just a second while I come over to the other, to my other screen so I can, yeah, um, so I can do the poll. So give me a second while I do that. Let's see. Uh, so our choices are going to be industrialization two, military one, free trade or diplomacy. I'm just going to add these and let you guys vote. Okay, the poll question is up. You guys vote and tell me what you think we should do here. What type of PC do I have? Well, it's kind of a hodgepodge built one. Um, Maybe if I get a chance later, I'll pull up the specs for you and let you see. It's it's decent. It'll run pretty much any game. It's not like super high end, but it works. All right, looks like military is winning. That's kind of what I was leaning, so I'm glad to see that. Do I think Grant's autobiogra autobiography is uh, a good unbiased look at his life? Um, he's obviously... I wouldn't say it's biased, but it's obviously his perspective. It's really good. And uh, of the autobiographies that I've read from the Civil War, it's the best. At least I think so. Uh, and again, that's my opinion. Um, 
Also, Grant by Chernow is fantastic. Um, Longstreet has a bio autobiography, but I, I had a hard time getting through his because it seemed like he was trying really, really hard to convince everybody how intelligent he was and really go out of his way to defend his actions. I didn't get the impression that Grant was trying to do that. So, um, so let's see um, where we're at on the vote. Yeah, uh, military by far is winning, so we're going to do military. Only takes 24 days for that one, too. Um, all right, we're at 80,000 recruited. I'm going to have to probably queue up some more uh, of the units pretty soon here. I want to try to get into some fighting if I can. Army of Mississippi is just kind of building up his base there in southwestern Kentucky. Uh, one of the updates that the developers have made to the game is... Um, they updated the AI to where he's more likely to promote um, high-end commanders, like promote better commanders to the top, whereas they didn't do that before. Um, we're going to try to auto-resolve this assault and see if we can't take this fort. He's only got nine men. Department of the Ohio in retreat. Did we actually drive McClellan off? over here with AP Hill. He's only got 1,400 men. That's kind of surprising. But the reason I'm not getting to fight some of these battles is because I'm not, um, my readiness isn't high enough uh, to be able to put them in an offensive stance. Looks like the Department of Pennsylvania is trying to sneak down here past Robert E. Lee. So uh, U.S. Navy arming civilian ships. So let's see if we can't intercept the Department of Pennsylvania with Robert E. Lee here. We've got a decent sized army. Glorious victory at Fort Smith. So we did take Fort Smith. Oh, uh, where is, oh, he's trying to do an end around on me and take Richmond. He's got the army of Northeastern Virginia there too with 12,000 men. There we go. All right, he's only got 7,000 men. Lee's got over 20,000. I thought maybe that other army would reinforce him, but it doesn't look like they're gonna get there. Let me get over here and scroll down the chat i'm not it's not surprising he was fighting mcclellan um so they're called the department of ohio because that's what they were when the when the war started um it wasn't so much about armies as it was about departments so for example ulysses s grant had a department he was his department was headquarters in headquartered in cairo illinois and so he had a certain area of land like territory on the map that he was responsible for um, and so whatever troops were assigned to that department, he commanded and he could form them into an army. Uh, and so there was the department of the Ohio, which eventually becomes the army of the Ohio. Uh, eventually they kind of do away with the departments. They still have the departments, but most of the, the commands are based on armies later in the war rather than departments. So, um, and then Grant had a, a, a you know, a senior that he reported to, which was General Halleck, and he had a larger department that included Grant's department, things like that. Um, what period does Grant's autobiography cover? He starts at the beginning. He doesn't spend a ton of time talking about his early life, but he does talk about his whole life, you know, growing up in Ohio, um, West Point, Mexico, um, but you know, a good bit of it's about the Civil War because that's what people wanted. And remember, he's writing this at the end of his life knowing he's dying and he's trying to get through it all. Um, and so he's, he's writing this to provide for his family. Uh, so we are on the Chancellorsville battlefield. That's cool. The James and Kanawha Canal battlefield. or That's the name of the battle. Where's he coming in from? He's coming in from the east. So it's kind of an east, east meets west thing, but we are defending at Wilderness Church. This is the Wilderness Battlefield, actually, where we're going to be fighting. Can you build submarines in the in the game? Uh, King Toby, no. And the submarines, I mean, the only submarine that really did anything was the Hunley, and that thing sank like three times. Um was swordsmanship an important skill to have in the Civil War? Um, 
I would say it's pretty far down the list. It wasn't that important. It wasn't something that got used very often. Um, you know, obviously it was the cavalry that primarily had sabers. Uh, and honestly, they weren't in the proximity to be able to use them all that often. Um, I think we're going to dig in behind this crick. Going to hold Garnet back with his cavalry. And we're, yeah, we're going to dig in behind here and let him come at us. You guys are seeing a lot of the stuff that normally you don't see on this campaign because I do this before I start recording. So, um, All right, we've got some 12-pounder howitzers right here that I think we'll throw right up on the front line. We're going to put them in behind this fence. Aren't submarines supposed to sink? Yes, but they're supposed to resurface too. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to put Garnet behind this. We'll put the cav behind the cavalry there. Um, my family, my son and my wife started talking, forgetting that I was recording. So I had to stop. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I think he's going to come down this main road. I mean, that's almost a certainty. So I might actually throw these guys up here, thinking that I might be able to get some flanking fire on them. We'll see. We'll, we'll try that, and we'll see if it works. Yeah, I've got a decent amount of engineering points. Um, I'm guessing we're not going to see too much action the first day. So I'm going to save those up and wait to see if we start to spot him. And if we start to spot him, um, then we'll be able to dig in and use more points. Oh, he's retreating. <laughs> he decided he wasn't going to fight uh, with that much of a disadvantage. So all of that just for nothing. Yeah, that's actually one of the reasons, Tom, that I decided to do uh, a lot of live streams on this campaign, as I thought it might be helpful for folks to see every bit of what happens, uh, rather than just um, the parts that I show you guys. Do I find elevation helpful? Uh, yeah, to a point. Um, I think the main thing elevation seems to do is it helps with line of sight, but it also helps because the enemy to get close has to attack uphill and that tends to cause him to get tired uh, and sometimes get um, lose cohesion. So I think those things help a lot. Part two coming tomorrow. Um, oh, I guess you're talking about the uh, oversimplified. Yeah, it'll be tomorrow. The game, I think the game is like thirty nine ninety nine US, but I, it's been a long time since I bought it, so I couldn't tell you for sure. Best Sabaton album, I think the newest one. I have read the Turtle Dove books, so that's a victory um, in which we didn't really do anything. Uh, so let me show you guys what recruiting looks like. Uh, so I'm going to be off of the chat for a second here because I've got to go uh, switch over to my Patreon page so I can see um, see the re the units that I have to recruit still. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing these in order in which they were requested except when I don't have available units. So, um, All right, let's go to the Army of Tennessee here. And we're going to recruit a fourth uh, unit into my division right here. Um, so let's see a Florida unit. Do we have enough? Now we only got 15 recruits in Florida, so we can't recruit, recruit Florida yet. Um, here's one, any location, any, 
Um, so Gruber's guards, let's get them. So who do we have a lot of? Um, Texas has got a lot. Tennessee's got a lot. This is actually in the Army of Tennessee, so we're going to recruit it there. I've been doing 2,250-man units. Uh, Gruber's guards, he actually doesn't have any, any request as far as uniform type goes. Um, so we're going to go with Butternut just to look cool. And then it's going to assign Earl Van Dorn as the commander. But he actually requested... Um, we don't have any guns available, so mixed muskets it is. Uh, he requested Robert A. Smith. We're going to see if Smith's available as a commander. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. No, not Johnston. I don't want to replace him. All right, so we'll see if Smith's available as a commander. we got five Smiths. There is no Robert A. Smith available, so we're just going to keep Van Dorn for now. Um, let me do a couple more, and then I'll get back to the chat, guys. Every time I click on that, it does that. Um, Western Army's got a decent amount. I think I might go ahead and add... another division to the army of the Shenandoah. Uh, let's see. We've got somebody requesting a West Virginia unit. That's actually ideal for the army of Shenandoah. Um, where is that? I just lost it. 36th West Virginia, it's going to be called. Uh, and again, no request as far as the unit or the uh, uniform goes. So we'll just go with that. And we'll name him 36 West Virginia. He requested John McCausland. We'll see if he's available as a commander. He's there, but he is not available yet. Um, so we're going to have to wait, but maybe eventually we can get him. I don't know if by promoting him that makes him come available. It doesn't appear like it does. We might just have to wait until the unit's recruited. It's going to take 47 days to do that. So, All right, let's get the chat back up here. Do we have any new projects? Oh, we got a... Nope, those are only the ones that are available there, those two. Policies, we are 16 days away from Military One being done. He might be injured. I don't think he's injured because he hasn't been recruited yet. I think he's from a different state. Um, I think when you first recruit those units, you can only uh, assign certain generals. Um, once the unit's in the field, I can probably uh, reassign. I like Careless Rex. Yeah, I like that song a lot. It's a really good one. Construction completed on... Uh, so we, we did our repairs to Fort Smith. Uh, we're going to have to get some men in there at some point but for now where did the union army go i don't know where he is but we're gonna make a push toward there's the crinton and john johnson resolution uh it was an attempt to get the confederacy to come back into the union by promising to right uh, to protect slavery by constitutional provision uh it really had very little ho hope of actual success It was a last-ditch legislative attempt to avert the war getting any worse. We're going to try to really make a move on St. Louis here. I've got John Hunt Morgan's got a decent-sized army. And hopefully that'll draw him out wherever he's at, and he'll come after me. I would like to go after the Army of the Mississippi, but I'm afraid to leave Nashville undefended. So I'm going to sit tight there for now. Army of the Susquehanna, 17,000 men strong. Let's send Lee after them. He's Yeah, he's a volunteer from Virginia. He, he can only command a unit from Virginia. How old am I? I just turned 45. I did see Rings of Power. I enjoyed it. Who is going to win the Premier League? Man City. Who I am going to probably get to see play here in a couple of months. 
Oh, he just, man, he is super aggressive. He just once again went down there to take Petersburg. I'm just going to have to hold the Army of Northern Virginia right here around Richmond, I guess. He goes and he starts to grab Petersburg, and then he runs off to the south the minute I get there. All right, we ran into somebody. Department of Pennsylvania again. We'll see if he actually stays and fights this time. How's the book coming along? A uh, lo lot of the research is done. I'm just really still getting started on the actual writing of it. Uh, St Sunstreaker. Trip to Chattanooga is off. The school that I was supposed to go to, um, I got reassigned to a school closer to home. So somebody else is going to Chattanooga now. So I will not be going to Chattanooga as planned. I am flying to St. Louis in two weeks, but I'm only going to be there less than 24 hours. I'm going to be arriving in the afternoon and flying out the next afternoon to come home. Sabaton is coming to Pittsburgh. It's a standing only uh, sort of place, though, because my family and I were hoping to go. But I don't know if we can do the whole take my three kids to a concert where everybody stands the whole time. So um, we might go to Cincinnati instead. Haven't, yeah, I saw The Devil in Ohio was on Netflix. I haven't watched it. Favorite city in Europe? Uh, ooh, good question. Of the ones I've visited so far, would have to say York in England. Mr. Toto, hello in Pakistan. Awesome, thank you. All right, let's see if he stays and fights this time. This time he holds the objective. We're on the Mechanicsville Cold Harbor battlefield. So hopefully he'll stay and fight since he's on the defensive this time. We still have a major advantage in numbers. So I'm going to move over this way, I think. Mr. Beep, what's going on? He's like, wait, a stream on the gaming channel? Yes, sir. So I'm going to load everybody up on this road because this is the road that we're going to take uh, to get at him. And we'll put Garnet's cavalry out front. We'll give them evade order so if they do run into the enemy, they won't stand and fight. I expect he's going to be dug in around here somewhere, so I'm going to send Garnet as far as about right there. Why so lazy, Mr. Beep? Mr. Beep and I are going to have to meet someday. He only lives right down the road from me in Alliance. Did you graduate high school yet, Mr. Beep? I think you did, didn't you? There's Julius Caesar Napoleon, my created general. We'll see how he performs. I, Jack, I'm in northeast Ohio, not far from the city of Youngstown. So if you drew a straight line between Cleveland and Pittsburgh... I would be exactly in the middle. Did we give Longstreet his orders yet? I don't know if we did. Yeah, we did. I think we gave all the divisions their orders. Uh, yeah, Strong Vincent. Definitely want to do a Hearts of Iron multiplayer. Trying to hold off... Um, Probably until after my son's soccer and cross-country cross, cross country seasons are over. So another month, month and a half or so. Because then my weekends will free up a little bit. It's not winter, so Napoleon should be safe. Uh, Morgan, yes. You can now create generals. The only um, catch to that is you have to create it before you start the campaign. You can't add generals once the campaign has started. I feel like I'm sure I gave Longstreet his orders, but he doesn't seem to be moving. So I don't know if he's just still waiting on them or if I did not, in fact, give him orders. No, I didn't. Okay. You can have Toledo, Michigan. Yeah, I'm anxious to play some more 
Hearts of Iron 4 multiplayer. That's a, a lot of fun to play. Looking to see how the uh, Oversimplified is doing on the other channel. Oh, 12,000 views in the first hour. I think that's pretty good. Dang. That's like almost double what my videos normally do in the first hour. So, <laughs> gotta love Oversimplified. Boy, they're making so much money. He doesn't have to make videos more than once every six months because not only does he get... He's got like 3 million views in the first 24 hours on each video, but he also gets all the revenue from everybody's reactions that they do. So, um, he's he, he's making... Easily, he's making hundreds of thousands of videos on or of dollars on every video he makes so he could make one a year and make a good living all right let's speed this up to 10 10x here uh we didn't order our oh hello 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 hold on he's actually dug in over here okay so that's why we send the cab first I'm going to go um, double line like this because I've got the advantage in manpower. So it makes sense for me to use my numbers and give myself plenty of strength and depth. See if we can find somewhere to put our artillery. No, Garnet, you stay right there. Somewhere we can put our artillery where they can actually get line of sight on the enemy. I don't have a lot of artillery at the moment. Most consequential minor skirmish of the Civil War. Um, I, it, it's not a minor skirmish, but it doesn't get talked about as a battle would be Champion Hill. I think Champion Hill might be the most important battle of the Civil War. Um, but minor skirmish. Let me think about that a little bit. Um... I can't think of any that really changed the outcome. But there are certainly consequential ones, like uh, Yellow Tavern, where Jeb Stewart gets killed, um, though it didn't change the outcome of the war. Um, good question. Let me think about that a little bit. What armies are fighting? Uh, this is the Army of Northern Virginia, for me, uh, under Lee. And I think it's the Department of Pennsylvania, under Patterson. Yeah, it is. Uh, the war's going... Uh, not really much has happened so far. His flank is exposed. Uh, he's going to turn to address that by the time my armies get there. What oversimplified would I like to see next? Wars of the Roses. I don't think it'll happen. But I would like to see that next. Champion Hill, uh, because I believe that the Vicksburg campaign is the decisive campaign of the war. It's the, I think that's where the war, the tide of the war gets changed. And Champion Hill is the decisive battle of that campaign. That was the battle when the, the fate of Vicksburg was sealed. Uh, hugely important battle. All right, let's speed things back up now. It's going to take a while for our army to get in position. Uh, it's There's a hill right here, so it's actually a really good place for me to go. He's pulling back. He's pulling out of his fortifications. And see, that was why in the previous battlefield, I didn't want to build my fortifications right away. Because I knew if he attacked me from somewhere else, I might have to give those up. The old intro, Mr. Willenshaw, are you talking about the one uh, with the History Guy logo on it? Boy, I, I forgot that existed. Grant did try to, bu uh, to build a canal to bypass the guns at Vicksburg. It didn't work because of disease, uh, because of the conditions, and because it kept filling up with water. They just couldn't, couldn't make it work. I actually visited the site uh it actually has a sign that says grant's canal and you can see the remnants of the canal 
Uh, some of my other favorite history games, Hearts of Iron 4. Um, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts I like a lot. Um, I think Victoria 3 is going to be a lot of fun. Crusader Kings series. I'm going to sneeze here in a minute, guys. I apologize. Okay. Yes, Grant did try to build a canal. They were trying to find a way to get past the guns at Vicksburg because it was such a formidable spot. And in the end, they just ran the guns and suffered very little damage. Yeah, um, World War II is the first major war where disease doesn't kill as many people as battle wounds do. Did I get all the guns? I did. Okay. All right. The army's getting into position now. There's a guy who has a bootleg, like a stolen copy of Victoria 3 who's been playing the game on his channel. Civ 6, yeah, I would play. I, I don't know if I'd make videos on it. Empire Total War is a lot of fun, but the AI is terrible on Total War games. Uh, yeah, I've played a lot of Hold Fast. All right, we're getting into position. He pulled all the way back. Smart move by the AI. So now we're going to have to cross to get at him. So the nice thing is now we can kind of organize how we want to do this. Organize our divisions. I'm going to put Napoleon out on this flank. Gonna put all four divisions on the line. Ooh, foundations a lot of fun too. There's a lot of like n nice, fun, like settlement and city builders right now. Crusader Kings three multiplayer would be so much fun. I did play a lot of Sim City back in the day. Regiments, you know that that whole genre of game like regiments and um, steel divisions stuff like that. They're really cool. I never really have gotten into them. I guess I'm more of a 19th century warfare guy than I am a 20th century warfare guy. Yeah, so I'm going to start out by kind of facing him directly to hold him in position. And then I'll probably figure out a way to outflank him. But I want to I want to line my whole army up first so he doesn't doesn't try to move again. Let's send Garnet out here. I saw Rule the Waves 3 is coming out. I actually got an email from them with a playable beta of the game. Um, haven't had a chance to dive into that yet, but that looks interesting. It actually goes all the way up to like 1970. So you have missiles and air power and stuff like that. Okay. Um, where is his line of retreat? It's going to be straight back there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get at that road. But um, all right, let's start with Edmund Kirby Smith's division. Uh, we're gonna, we're going to probably encounter his skirmishers in doing this. I, I've played a little bit of the Men of War series, yeah. All right, we did escape the skirmishers, so that's good. So I'm going to spread Longstreet out now into a single line formation and have him hold this section here while we try to move Kirby Smith into the flanking position rule the waves no it looks like it has the same graphics actually i was a little surprised by that i thought they might try to compete with ultimate admiral dreadnoughts a little more but it doesn't look like that's what they're doing all right we're going to move long street up to here we're going to put the skirmishers out and then we're going to oh no 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 cancel that i accidentally had lee selected for some reason lee's over there i don't want him over there
Yeah, we're going to deploy skirmishers here in just a second. Yeah, Rule the Waves is a spreadsheet more than a game. You're right. It does look like it has a lot more design features. As soon as Longstreet gets into position, we'll deploy his skirmishers. What's going on, Nolan? All right, let's slow time down now. They were still getting into position, and his skirmishers came down, so everybody's kind of out of position here. There we go. Oh, no, don't lay down. Oh, my gosh. I'm giving stupid orders right now. It's not letting me deploy skirmishers yet. Oh, because we're already engaged. We can't. We can go to long range. We've got Mississippi rifles. Uh, the 21st has those. So does Jonathan's rifles. Okay. First things first, let's give these guys all long range. All right, now he's pulling his skirmishers back. So now we can deploy ours. He's going to send, looks like he's going to send Cav over here to cover that flank. He's redeploying now, so let's move. Let's move quick before he has a chance to redeploy too much. Imagine this game in Europe. I'm hoping, I really hope, that now that they've got a pretty well fleshed out game, because think about it, I mean, this game has come so far since it first came out. If they could take this game engine and make a Grand Tactician Napoleonic Wars, holy cow, would that be a phenomenal game. I would I would so be into that. With multiple nations and a, like a diplomacy feature uh, where you can negotiate alliances and things like that. Oh my goodness. I don't know how well this would translate to a World War I, for example. Uh, Napoleonic War seems like the natural way to go. Unless they went like revolution because of um, an American audience. Worst president besides my friend Woodrow? Easy, uh, Andrew Johnson. Expanded world map, Mr. Beep, awesome. I've been waiting for them to update uh, Dread Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts before I get back to it. The uniform options for Napoleonic War would be fantastic, absolutely. All right, looks like this is working so far. Uh, I, we've got his left flank in a little disarray here. So we've got the Georgia Zouaves advancing. They've only got mixed muskets, though. The Bibb County Boys over here. I think that's a Georgia Georgia unit, too. And then the Tar Heel Rifles coming up in the rear. Bonham's got these Mississippi Rifles, so he's got nice long range. S Casualties are pretty similar on both sides at the moment. Let's get these artillery pieces into position so they can do something. Got to be careful with these skirmishers here. Civil Recommended Civil War games? This one. This one's the best one, I think. Um, this is the, the best combination of... Um, of everything that makes other games good. What is going on here, guys? Why are the Georgia Zouaves heading that direction? Let's try to get them turned around. All right, we need Longstreet to advance. Oh, why is he back into a moving back into column formation. The fish hook, yeah. It is kind of a fish hook. We're we're enveloping him, which is kind of the goal here. I'm going to I'm going to send Garnet with his cavalry up here to this crossroads. See if we can't intercept retreating troops. 
Alright, let me see if I can't get Ramser out on this side. Ultimate General is good. It's very good. And it looks nice. It's a lot of fun to play. But I just, I wish it had, I wish it was less linear, you know? Uh, it's always the same battles. Okay. Let's get a look at the ground level here. I think we're in pretty good shape. We outnumber him, so that helps a lot. Confederates didn't lose a lot of battles where they outnumbered the enemy. Of course, they rarely outnumbered the enemy. Uh, notable exception, Stonewall Jackson's Valley Campaign. All the battles he won in the Valley, he had the numerical advantage. This is the max. Um, it's the highest difficulty which means um, all of their stats are maxed, all of their, um, like the casualty ratios and the, the casualty ratios and the recruitment ratios are all maxed out. The only thing I didn't max was aggression. I went one step from max aggression, but that's not difficulty. That's just how aggressive he is. He's already way more aggressive than the Union was historically. All right, he's starting to pull back already. Let's go ahead and send Napoleon in. I don't know what Frost is doing there. Any features I'd like to see in future updates? Um, I feel like most of the stuff I wanted in this game they now have. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything specific I'd really like to see. I know a ton of people would like to see this go down to the regimental level, but I feel like that would just be um, too unwieldy. I think the brigade level works for this game. I right, Obviously multiplayer, which I don't know if that would ever happen, but could you imagine if this game had multiplayer, it might be my favorite game of all time. Oh, he's going to get aggressive and come back at me now. Looks like Erasmus Keys is coming in with a big division, or a big brigade, 2,700 men strong. How's uh, my general doing? Uh, he's not in this army. My other created guy is, Napoleon, and he's coming in from this side, so he hasn't really fought too much yet. Got mixed muskets and Springfield muskets here. So I guess maybe Smith wasn't the best division for the flanking because I don't have any rifles in that division. All right, I'm going to tell Longstreet to call his skirmishers back in. And we're going to start moving in with the, uh, with the infantry. All right, we just broke another brigade. I think we're near victory now. Casualties, still pretty close. 600 for me, 900 for him. The casualties tend to increase on the enemy side toward the end of these battles when I start winning. Uh, you can use your own picture for the general. There's a way to do that. I didn't do it for this one. Um, but it is possible. Um, Victoria 3 is going to be a lot of fun. I always found Victoria 2 to be a really challenging game. Um, so I'm excited about that. What is my favorite game of all time? Great question. Probably Hearts of Iron 4. That or Football Manager. Why the change in Custer from Civil War to Little Bighorn? Um, different nature of the war. Um, different kind of combat. I mean, the Native American forces and the nature of that war and the way it was spread out and you were far from your base of supply and base of operations. It's just completely different nature. Um, 
Custer could afford to be the dashing young cavalrymen who took chances on a Civil War battlefield when there's a whole army behind him. It's a different situation when you're out in the you know hundreds of miles from your base and you run into a 10,000 person um, camp. What I think are the best rifles in the game, the Dry's Needle Guns. Fantastic. It just takes a while to get them. And I don't, I don't even know if you can get them on the Confederate side. You probably can. All right, let's press ahead. We're coming in with Buckner now as well. All right, let's bring Garnett in and see if we can't hit one of these retreating units. He's about to, to fall apart here, and the casualties are going to go up pretty high on his side, I think. Yeah, outfought and outthought. And uh, Wolf Canada, one of the other things that people don't talk about a lot, it does get talked about some, uh, is that Custer's men had these single-shot breech loaders, which were great for accuracy, but terrible when you're outnumbered and in a desperate fight and you're facing natives who have repeaters, many of them. Uh, so between their bows and arrows and their repeating rifles, the uh, Lakota were able to sometimes get off four or five shots for every one that Custer's men were getting off, which at close range uh, is terrible. It, Buck, no, Buckner is not related to Bolivar. Um, he was that was he was named after him. He was named Simon Bolivar Buckner, and his son Simon Bolivar Buckner Jr. was one of the highest ranking U.S. generals killed in World War II. In fact, Buckner Jr. was killed in World War II. Um, Nathan Bedford Forrest III was killed in World War II. And I feel like there was one more um, named after a Civil War general. Oh, Stonewall Jackson had a great-grandson who was killed in World War II. I think both Nathan Bedford Forrest III and Stonewall Jackson's great-grandson were, were in the Air Forces and were shot down. I'm going to do a video about that someday. About the ties between the Civil War and World War II. Pretty fascinating. All right. He's falling apart. He is retreating. Let's go grab these guns, or this gun right here. Let's see if we can turn around and hit these guys. Um, all right. We got we to gotta look at the headquarters here uh, for a second and see... Who battle honors are going to go to for this one? I, I like nobody stands out to me until we look at the numbers, I guess. So, combat report. Smith's division. I feel like Smith's division probably gets the honors here, but eh, it looks like everybody's pretty even. Jonathan's rifles took a lot of casualties. Uh, the first Victorian mounted rifles, no. Yeah, let's look at Jonathan's rifles for a second. I feel like maybe it's them. Let's go back and look at the battlefield. Only lost 1,000 men. Only inflicted 2,700 in that one. So Jonathan's rifles, they had Mississippis. Oh, well, they, they lost 115 men, but how many casualties did they inflict in this one? They inflicted 600. Um, so I think we're going to give them the battle honors from this one. This game good? Yeah, I love it. Love it a lot. Theodore Roosevelt's son was not killed. He died of a heart attack. Um... He got the Medal of Honor for his actions on D-Day landing in Omaha or Utah Beach. Uh, was given command of his own division, and then died of a heart attack before he could lead the division in battle. Wade Hampton um, commanded what was called Hampton's Legion, which was like this mix of different kinds of units. Um, became governor of South Carolina after the war. Yeah, Nathan Bedford Forrest III died in a plane crash. So did, I think his name was Tom Thomas 
Jackson Christian, I think was Stonewall Jackson's great grandson who died, was shot down. Yeah, Custer was not an idiot. Uh, his, he was just too aggressive. And remember, he had been a division commander. He had been a brevet major general in World War II. And he goes all the way back, or not World War II, in the Civil War. He goes all the way back to lieutenant colonel, second in command of a cavalry uh, regiment in the post-war world. So um, he was trying to get back to where he was. Okay. So let's go to the military here. Let's go to Army of Northern Virginia. We are looking for Jonathan's rifles. So actually, the, the two units that have gotten the first battle honors have been both in the same division. A lot of combat to go. Uh, we're going to see a lot of other units get involved before it's all said and done. So uh, we're going to give them the battle honors here. Put a star in front of them for that one. Daniel Frost is already a Brigadier General, so we're not going to give him a promotion. We're going to promote Longstreet, though, to Major General. And I think we'll go ahead and promote Lee to Lieutenant General because I want to see if that makes him overall commander uh, of the Confederate Army now. Uh, it doesn't so far, but I'm thinking maybe that'll change because he's the first Lieutenant General that we have. So let's see if that actually did that. No, it's still saying pillow. There's got to be a way to change that. Did you know Great Danes are now called the Jerem Dog? Garum Dog? I don't know what that means. President Chris issues a presidential unit citation. There's Military One. Um, hopefully, oh, we got a while before we can get things like British rifles. I would like to get cavalry reform at some point. There's a lot of things I'd like in terms of the military. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Military 2 uh, would allow us higher military subsidies, new weapon and chip types. I think that also allows us... I think that's where we get core. Oh, no, core is now a... Um, that's a project now. It's not under policies anymore. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to build a Navy. It's, I'm waiting for some upgrades to technology before I start investing in the Navy. All right, let's go back for a second to finances because I want to look. Uh, we don't have the ability to invest any more in military than we did before. Yeah, I think military two is probably where I'm going to go here. That's 43 days to get that one. Most of our units that we've queued up are now in the field. We've got more to recruit, though, but I'll try to do some of that off off camera after the stream's over. He's got two armies over here now. Army of the Mississippi, 17,000 men. Army of the Tennessee has nobody right now. So the Army of Indiana is there. He's got Kimes Raiders right here. That's interesting. Let's see. Army of the Northwest has 10,000 men now. Let's try to hit McClellan if we can. We're, I'm kind of playing defensively right now. Uh, well, I mean, Northern Virginia has its first upgrade. We're going to give it Ambulance Corps. I always go with Ambulance Corps first. Um, backseat Gamer, sorry, I have to go with the time I have available. Um, and it being 4 a.m. for you, the vast majority of the people who watch this channel are either in North America or Europe. And this is the time I have available, so sorry. You can always watch it later. Uh, what do I consider in the strength of the brigades? Strong Vincent, the main factor right now is that I wanted to be able to get all of the patron units recruited. Um, in the past, we've had, a, had an issue where I didn't have enough recruits, and I'd be seven, eight episodes into a campaign before I could get all the patron units recruited. So I thought by recruiting smaller units, like 1,500 to 2,200 men, I could get all those units recruited faster, and then once the war goes and I've got a lot of recruits, then I can build them up to 3,000 after we start. Um, I don't know if I have the ability 
to do that. Let me let me find. So Yule's Brigade, for example, is one of the non-patron units. So see, it's not letting me. It, you used to always be able to drag like a unit like Yule's Brigade into the other ones and consolidate them. It doesn't let me do that anymore, uh, which is kind of disappointing, but it is what it is. But a lot of these units are starting to get up to full strength already, so that's good. Um, yeah, uh, we mentioned earlier about fifteen, only 15 recruits in Florida. We do already have a Florida unit right here, the Florida lead launcher, so that's why there was only 15 available recruits. King Toby, it's captain level on up uh, to request a pet patron unit. This is a live stream. So hello. Uh, am I familiar with historic travels? I don't think I've seen them. Just checking uh, my my new video over on the other channel. has got 17,000 views in an hour and a half. That's crazy. People love oversimplified. That's for sure. All right. Um, yeah, not a lot available as far as these go. I want to look real quick at fleets. Mississippi River Squadron. Um, we're up to 71% on some of those ships. What do we have the ability to build? Oh, we do have um, a lot of new options that we didn't have before. So that's some good news right there. So um, I want to build the North Carolina squadron is going to become my blockade runner. Uh, my first blockade runner squadron. Uh, so we're going to get some bigger ones uh, in that sailing ships that can run blockades. So we'll build some brigs. Uh, I didn't mean to queue up nine of them, but okay. <laughs> I guess that'll do. Um, I think we'll do the same with the Savannah Squadron. You can see up here, I've got a lot of available shipyard utilization. Um, we'll get, get some frigates going, not nine of them though. Fast steamers, uh, yeah, I you know I haven't experimented a ton with how all that operates on this game. Mainly concerned about what I can build and how many guns they have and how how much resources they take. Sloops of war are a little bigger. I might queue up three of those. Yeah, Briggs, um, I've got a lot of those queued up, so we'll see how that goes. Yes, the game does make a difference between brown and blue water navies. In fact, I'll show you that. Um, if you go to fleets, you can see here the James River Squadron is listed as a river-going fleet. Um, and it's got ships that can actually do sea or rivers. Uh, and depending on what you put in it, um, you can see here... Uh, propulsion, sail, and steam, movement, sea, and rivers. Certain ships are only going to be available for certain kinds. Um, like, I can't put the CSS Jackson into this one. So, yeah, there's definitely a difference. Uh, let's look at the numbers now. He's up to 165,000 men. I'm at 100,000. You can see the Navy tonnage, big difference there at the moment. His economy, it actually says the economies are evenly matched at the moment, which is cool. Um, all right, what are we going to, there's Austri Austrian rifles. Uh, Lawrence's would be huge. I would like to be able to get some, actually, you know what? While we're at it, let's look at avail if there's any available weapons. out here uh, a lot of these we can't order at the moment 
So no, not much. I'd love to be able to get some three inch ordnance, but we can't. It's not available. We do have some Springfields on the way. They are still 57 days away and there's only 10,000 of them coming. Um, Eighty-one days on Mississippi rifles. Favorite Ohio urban legend or folk tale? Uh, there's one here locally that supposedly uh, there's this there's this rock near where I live called Council Rock, and it was a place where the uh, the native tribes that lived in this area would have their like councils. They would have their you know their meetings. And supposedly it was at that Council Rock that supposedly the curse was placed on the United States, where every 20 years, whoever was elected president was going to die in office. And until Ronald Reagan, that actually happened. Every president elected on a year ending in zero uh, died in office until Ronald Reagan. Whoa, the Army of the Susquehanna is in North Carolina. Lovely. I have nobody who can really counter that. Uh, we're probably going to have to send AP Hill down there with the Army of the Northwest. The Army of Pennsylvania is down there too. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. We're going to have to send AP Hill down to North Carolina. Let's try to be aggressive up here then. We're going to send the Army of the Shenandoah to hit the Army of the Potomac. Cleveland Browns win the Super Bowl. That's a folk tale. Yes, it is. All right. We may actually cause the Army of the Potomac to just retreat here because he's outnumbered three to one. We're opening up West Virginia to the Department of Ohio, which is not ideal. Oh, no. Um, he actually may fight. I, I'm guessing he's going to retreat here. Yeah, Reagan did get sh uh, shot, but he survived. You have to boycott my channel if North Carolina falls. I will do my best not to let that happen. Uh, Mog Assassin. I'm not... Yeah, Custer was part of a three-pronged attack. But I'm not sure where you're getting that the Lakota intercepted and defeated the other ones. Uh, the other ones, no, that didn't happen. Custer went in as part of that three-pronged attack, and the the rest of the columns arrived at Little Bighorn like a day or two later. Custer was the only one that was that suffered a significant defeat. Zach, what's going on? Yeah, I'm not sure that General Smith is actually going to stand and fight here. He's going to probably retreat. I'm hoping to get out to the Little Bighorn Battlefield. Um, that is my next kind of on my bucket list domestic battlefield I want to get to. All right, we're going to get to see the Army of the Shenandoah for the first time. We're on the Antietam Battlefield. Just came back from there, so this is exciting. Can you get Maryland to secede? I'm not sure that you can. We're going to throw the Ringgold Division on this side. Where is he going to come from? This is a meeting engagement. He's going to come directly from the north. So actually, it may make sense for me here to put my whole army on this side. All right, so we'll throw the Ringgold Division right up here. This is Burnside Bridge right here, the one that's called the Lower Bridge. That's the one we call Burnside Bridge from the battle. Stonewall Jackson's got a division. I don't think we're going to go up and try to cover the other crossings. We'll let him cross. 
I still think he's going to pull out, though. I'll be really surprised if he actually stands and fights here. We'll see. Custer liked his hair too much like a soccer player. After the Dutch trip, um, I already made the Dutch trip. That was months ago. Um, my next trip is actually, um, other than for Rachel's Challenge, where I'll be speaking in schools, um, my next trip for vlogging through history is uh, going to be, my boys and I are going to England, uh, and we're, we're going to see not one, not two. Yep, he's retreating. But three professional soccer matches, football to the folks in England. And we're going to see three of them in four days. Uh, and then uh, and then we're flying to Belgium, and we're going to be doing a two-day World War II tour with some guys from Band of Brothers. Yeah, Strong Vincent's right about Maryland, especially Central and Western Maryland, pretty pro-union. Lee was actually kind of surprised that they weren't welcomed as openly as he expected them to be when they invaded Maryland. Yes, Sven. Um, and Rad, uh, two of them are Premier League teams. Actually, we're seeing a championship game. We're seeing a Premier League game, and we're seeing a Champions League game. Um, we're going to see Manchester United and West Ham on Sunday. I think it's October 30th. Then on Tuesday, November 1st, we're going to see West Brom against Blackpool. And then on November 2nd, we're going to see Man City versus Sevilla. So, yes. So, Steve, we're going to see Man City and Manchester United now. Um, uh, a follower of the channel who's a, a, become a friend um, is a season ticket holder for Man City. And so he's going to get us tickets to see the Champions League game. All right, let's see where we're at. Oh, our Navy tonnage is up to 34,000 now. We're getting close to being able to get those Austrian rifles. That's under diplomacy. Let's ramp up the diplomacy spending somewhat. West Ham's your team. Very cool. Confederate Army is unstoppable. The morale of the Union armies is down to 69 now. I haven't picked a team in the Bundesliga yet. I'm working on that. I haven't chosen one. Yeah, Steve, we are we're actually staying. There's a hotel um, that's right above a pub that, like, you can see Old Trafford from the windows of the hotel. It's like got an Old Trafford theme to it, uh, and that's where we're staying in Manchester. Um, so we can actually do assignable only and see what we have. Trade deals, um, increases profits from foreign trade deals, plantation, mechanization, cotton is king. Europe will support, um, each level further improves relations with European nations. Let's do cotton is king. I held off a while on doing that. Did, did West Ham lose today? I saw that uh, Liverpool and Everton tied. No, it's not going to be Bayern Munich. That's why I haven't chosen one yet because Bayern Munich's like, you know, it's like Manchester United. It's the one that all the Americans choose because it's like the top name, and I don't want to be that guy. Hey, by the way, this is kind of cool. I just found out this. Leeds United. Uh, who's in the Premier League, um, Leeds United, 45% of Leeds United is owned by an American couple who lives down the street from me. <laughs> like, no lie. they Like, I can be at their house in five minutes 
from where I live. They live in the same town as me, and they own 45% of Leeds United. They own the San Francisco 49ers, American football team. We've known that. Like, I've known all my life that a local family owned the 49ers, but I didn't know that they now own 45% of Leeds, too. And Leeds has kind of become like the new sexy team for Americans to support for some reason. That and Wrexham, which I, I, I get that. I, I kind of would love to see Wrexham succeed too. All right, Army of the Northwest is moving south. I did a Jack the Ripper tour, Sven, when we were in London uh, in July. So his two armies are sitting down here by Fort Caswell right now. My North Carolina squadron is not very powerful. All right, he's at, he's at 155. We're pretty good in terms of our recruiting at the moment. All right, we've got armored gunboats. I th I'm going to hold off. I'm not going to spend on any of these. I'm going to wait until we can get something better. I really need some better weapons. Best named general in the Civil War, Ohioan Bushrod Johnson. Yes, Bushrod Johnson was one of those. There were those people who fought for the opposite side from where their state was. Um, Bushrod Johnson's one. Uh, John Gibbon, who commanded the Iron Brigade, was from North Carolina. Um, George Thomas is from Virginia. Um Who's another one? There's a... Who's the guy out west? He was a Confederate kind of irregular who killed a lot of people. He was from Ohio. In fact, he's buried here in, in northeast Ohio. Um, I forget his name off the top of my head. Union extends contracts to three years. So they just did Militia 3. Austrian rifles are available now. Lawrence rifles. Now that we're pouring more money into diplomacy. If I wait, is there anything else? British artillery, British rifles, the Whitworths would be really nice to have. Let's do it. Let's do the Lawrence rifles. Let's see if there's any available to order. Oh, we got the Augustans. Okay, so not Lawrence's yet. Uh, Augustans, these are a little quicker on the order. That's good. 25,000 of them. In 136 days. Uh, that's good. There's Lawrence. We can get 25,000 of those in 107 days. That's nice. That That's a quick turnaround. I like that. That's going to help a lot. Yeah, states' rights guest might have the best name. Ooh, what's going on here? Okay. Army of the Shenandoah. we got the Army of the Potomac, the very fancily named 36th Army, and the Army of Northeastern Virginia. John Pope versus Joe Johnston. This will be our last uh, battle for this stream. We'll wrap the stream up after this battle. I've got a wedding to go to today, so I can't be on here all day. We went in July, yeah. No, we, we actually went the end of June. Um, we got back July 13th. Uh, Gatlin guns are available in the game. I don't know if Confederates are going to be able to get them or not. We'll see. They have 36 armies. No, I think it's just a fancy name for some reason. How long is a day in the game? It just depends on how fast you're simming. You can go pretty slow with it. Good American soccer teams? Yeah, I mean, America's getting better at soccer. My team, Columbus Crew, uh, won the MLS Cup, which is like our championship two years ago. Um, and this is kind of cool, although we're not going to talk about Rangers too much because I, I support the Rangers in Glasgow and ugly day for them against Celtic. Um, but Rangers, who I support in Scotland, and Columbus Crew, who I support here in the U.S., have players on their rosters who are twin brothers to each other. So that's kind of cool. Are you familiar with Dude Perfect Clap Your Hands? Yes, I am. All right, we are on the Winchester battlefield here in the 
Shenandoah Valley. And Stonewall Jackson gets to fight in Winchester. Okay, we are outnumbered. We've got some some decent uh, points to spend here. We're going to dig in around the objective. Um, I've actually I've fought on this battlefield with this objective before. So um, we're going to build breastworks. And I'm going to I'm going to try to wrap this all the way around just in case that used all the points I had. So just in case he tries to get around my flanks. A little familiar with history secret secrets, not real familiar. All right, we're going to throw early out here on the flank. Phil, thank you so much. Appreciate that. I'll try to get Delaware for you on this one, Phil. If I can ever go on the offensive, we'll see. Gonna hold some units in reserve. We'll put Stuart out here on the flank. And let's see what happens. Yeah, this is gonna be an interesting one because uh, he's gonna outnumber me. Right now he's only got 7,500, but his other units are going to arrive within an hour. Realistic travel in a day, it's pretty much what you might expect. And you'll notice that the, the armies don't travel at night. Like, they'll move, they'll stop, they'll move, they'll stop. Uh, so it's pretty realistic in that way. Playing games does sound more fun than a wedding, Professor What I agree 100%. Um, my guns are outside the defenses. Oh, yeah, so they are. I don't have that many guns. I've got four guns. Rockbridge Artillery, that's it. Hey, Robert E. Lee's son, Robert E. Lee Jr., was a private in the Rockbridge Artillery. I know at least as of the Battle of Antietam, he was still a private in the Rockbridge Artillery. I think he got promoted after that. Thanks, Backseat Gamer. What well, map? This is Winchester. Winchester uh, in the Shenandoah Valley. The most fought over city in the war. Changed hands like 72 times. Because it's the entrance to the Shenandoah Valley. Which is a key strategic place. One of the things I noticed, I'm a little disappointed by, hopefully they'll update this, maybe I'll submit this to them, I'm sure, although I'm sure somebody has already. Um, there are military academies in the game which help with your stats for your generals. Here come the other armies. Uh, the Citadel down in South Carolina is showing up on here, but Virginia Military Institute is not. Uh, so I wish they would change that. I should point out too, it's important to remember that in this game, in my campaign, Richmond is not the capital of the Confederacy. Montgomery, Alabama is. So that's important. I need to try and remember that myself. All right. Here they come. Oh, man. I've got the second Virginia right there in the center with mixed muskets. I should have paid a little more attention to that and put better units on the front line. So I'm actually going to pull them off the front. It's just skirmishers anyway. I'm going to pull them off. I'm going to and I'm going to do some switching around here to get units with better weapons on the front lines. I'm going to take a few casualties in doing this, but I'd rather do it now than when he gets his whole army up. John Bell Hood, um, good commander. Good, great division commander. Um, and I don't know how much of why he failed at higher levels, how much of that is him not being suited for higher command versus 
what had happened to him at that point in his life. Um, by the time he gets higher command, we have to remember, he loses the use of an arm at Gettysburg. Uh, his arm is shattered. He's never able to use it again, even though it's not am amputated. Two months later, his leg is shattered and amputated uh, right below the hip at uh, the Battle of Chickamauga. Uh, two bloodiest battles of the war, and he's horribly mutilated in both of them. I think that changed him. I don't think he was ever the same after that. Come on, Zollicoffer, get out of there. Oh, he's pulling back now. He must be rethinking his strategy a little bit. I'm wondering where he's going to come at me, if not there. I guess we'll find out. In the meantime, he's just leaving this skirmisher detachment here to fight it out with me, and we're taking a lot of casualties in the meantime. And it won't let me send skirmishers out once once they're engaged. All right, we'll speed this up, see what happens here. All right, you know what? I, I was about to charge him, but then he, he pulled out. Oh, now he's coming back. We're going to run out of daylight before long here. What are you doing? No, 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 no. Oh, I moved the wrong unit. I meant to just move these guys. Oh, I screwed that up. And now I'm under fire. Oh, he's pulling guns up. Okay. So let's do this. We're going to send some skirmishers out under Polk and send them at those guns early as well. All right. What a mess. Let's get this sorted out here, guys. That's crazy, Phil. Yeah, I don't have VMI, but I have um, the Citadel down in South Carolina. I wonder if it's um, based on the choice to... Based on the fact that I didn't choose Old Dominion as one of my pre-war selections. So I didn't move the capital to Richmond. I don't know if that maybe that's why. All right, we're driving the guns off, so that's good. Nathan, what's going on? Good to see you. What, uh, who would, I, which battle would I have fought in? I wouldn't have wanted to fight in any of them, but uh, as as the Union, if I could go back in history, I would take on the role of McClellan outside Richmond during the Seven Days because he could have taken Richmond there. They needed a more aggressive commander. Lay down the boys for more cover. I only need to lay down if I'm under artillery fire. There's not a lot of advantage to laying down otherwise. So we're going to run out of daylight here soon, but just to show, we've got the Anson County Congregation under the Fighting Bishop, Leonidas Polk. We've got Early Early's Brigade there. We've got the 1st Ringgold Brigade here, 4th Ringgold's there. Second Virginia in reserve. All right, he's driving off the skirmishers now. Thank you, Luke. Appreciate that. Fredericksburg, Nathan. Okay, very cool. That's another one that, that was very winnable for the Union, even with the debacle on Marie's Heights. Mr. Willenshower, We the Revolution wasn't getting views. Um, so when you do when you do videos that don't get a lot of views, it not only hurts those like obviously just the standpoint of not getting views, it drags down the views on everything else because YouTube recommends your channel less. 
Um, so that's why if I'm doing a series and it's not getting a lot of views, I just stop doing it because uh, it hurts the channel. All right, uh, Ringgold Brigade. And Early's Brigade taking on this one Union unit. He's being pretty timid so far. I think that's probably because he's got other armies that are moving into position. And he's still waiting. But so far, so good. The whole marrying sisters thing seems to be pretty common. Um... D.A. Chill and Stonewall Jackson did the same thing. They were married to sisters. And at the um, at Burnside Bridge in Antietam, you had um, the Confederate Division Commander and one of the Union Regimental Commanders that was attacking Burnside Bridge. They were married to sisters. Was there a unit coming in from behind? Yes! Oh my gosh! Oh, his his other army came in from over there. Oh my goodness. That that was all a distraction back there. Look at that. I did not see that coming. He he went in and actually grabbed my entrance point and snuck in from behind on me. You clever rascal you. Oh no, I don't no, I don't want to pull that whole division out. All right, this just got a lot more interesting. And now he's going to come at us again. Smith teleports behind you. Oh, at Darren Smith. I, say, I just got Chancellorsville. Yes, I did. And I have Stonewall Jackson and Jeb Stewart, who were both a part of that. All right, now looks like Israel Richardson's coming at me. He's coming in close, too. Samuel Cooper was actually the highest ranking officer in the Confederate Army. He was the first, he, he had a, a higher four star rank than Robert E. Lee did and others. Oh, he's going to come at Stuart big time. Stuart's going to have to break off. All right, Zollicoffer, get up there. And that is why you have reserves. And, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm so glad to see the AI pull stuff like that off because it means the AI is evolving. It's getting better. We all remember, if you've seen the game, the AI wasn't always that great. Um, so I'm glad to see him pulling stuff like that. Now we'll see what he does with it. I'm still at a nice advantage on casualties right now. We're about to run out of daylight. Stewart's about to get overwhelmed. Come on, Zollicoffer, get up there. Ah, there, Stewart broke. Right, here's the problem now. I don't really have the ability to pull anybody else off the line, but I think we're going to run out of daylight. So I'll be able to redeploy. We're doing good right now over here. He is coming at me with another brigade. But we're behind cover still. So that's why the casualties are what they are. Oh, I got three brigades there. They're two right over top of each other. That's not helpful. So let's pull these guys back. And then we'll try to redeploy them. We're holding. Good thing we built the fortifications. Stewart's one of the best cavalry commanders. I think Stewart, um, Nathan Bedford Forrest. Oh boy. So the Ringgold Brigade broke, but so did Richardson on his side. But now we've got a bit of a problem here. Um, we're going to have to redeploy Polk over to the other side. Let's get him in over here. I don't know what Loring's doing, but let's pull him back so he's not in front of the lines like that. 
All right, now we can redeploy these guys. I'd just love to see um, see it easier for people to mod this game. How are my Buckeyes looking? We're going to find out tonight, Colton. Number two, Ohio State versus number five, Notre Dame. Opening game of the season. So um, we're going to find out real quick what Ohio State's made of. Oh, why are they marching in front like that? Oh, good. Van Cleve backed out just in time. CBB, thank you so much. I am familiar with Thomas Maher's story. I actually um, just talked about him in an upcoming video that I'll have coming out uh, from Antietam talking about the Irish Brigade. Um, yeah, and, and afterwards with being out in Montana and dying under mysterious circumstances and, of course, his history uh, before he comes to America is really fascinating. Is the Battle of Franklin in this game? None of the bat. Um, oh, like as a historic battle? I don't think so. Yeah, I always figured new titles and our productions would be coming. I figured Grand Tactician was probably the start of something. Although I think technically they made Seven Years War. Or at least some of the same people were involved. Well, General Maher um, probably drowned. But some people think there was foul play involved. What are the casualties? Uh, who was wounded? Leonidas Polk's been wounded. Holding the line over here. Uh, casualties. Boy, this is fascinating. We're actually leaning more towards defeat. Uh, casualties are almost even. And that's because of what's happening down here. Oh, Lawton just broke. Remember, this is first battle for all of these units. None of these units have fought before. Um... So they're going to break a lot quicker than they do in future battles. He's got artillery over here, which isn't helping. I'm going to send some skirmishers out. Come on, Polk. Hang on. Uh, I think I'm... Yeah, there goes Cock. I'm going to lose this battle. Oh my gosh, Zach, it's crazy. I, No lie, I had at least a couple of thousand comments telling me that, that the new video was out. What if Garibaldi joined the Union? I don't know how much of a difference he really would have made. Oh, boy. Yeah, we're falling apart here right now. Zollicoffer's hanging on. New York Copperheads. Of course, he's out of range. Yep, I think... I think it's time to withdraw. Well, you know what? Hold on, because we're about to hit nightfall. Oh, no, we still got at least another hour or two of daylight. It's summer. That's right. Let's hang on and see what happens if we make it to the next day. Oh, no. He's moving his guns forward now. He's going to start hitting the New York Copperheads. I'm not getting any reinforcements, Nathan. This is all I got. Hunter Smith, thank you so much. Yeah, I think the game's improved so much since the beginning. Oh, look at him move the guns forward now. All right, Zolikoffer sends skirmishers out there. Let's hit these guns. I'm going to turn my guns around too. Target his. I'm hoping maybe I can get some of these guys back if I can make it to the next day. Because he, he's kind of holding off on his attack now. See if we can rally any of these units that are broken. Oh, 
Oh boy. Come on, Nightfall. All right. Newark Copperheads. Oh, there's End of Day. Okay. Okay. It's not over yet, folks. It is not over yet. Let's redeploy the whole army. Oh, we can't go out there. We've got the really narrow strip of land in which we can deploy. All right, Jackson. I'm looking at the divisions here. All of my divisions are pretty shot up at the moment. Okay. And then we've got Early's Brigade, which is kind of the extra one by itself. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see if we can do anything here. We'll try to hang on, and then we'll wrap this stream up as soon as this battle's over. He's got the objective now. He's going to start turning his guns on me now. Oh, not the guns. Let's pull them back. Now, we'll see where he comes at me. Uh, Col Colton, I would disagree with that. I don't think Pleasanton was that great. I think Buford... Buford and Sheridan, maybe, for me, on the Union side. Who's losing men? Cooper. Where's Cooper? He's right there. He's not losing anybody. Oh, he must be artillery. Not entirely sure what he's doing here. I've lost 18% of my men, though. That's a bit of a problem. And I've lost my cavalry. Here he comes. Is that George Thomas? Perfect. Please throw a couple of brigades at me. Oh, Cooper's skirmishers were still out there. Okay. He's getting his whole army lined up before he attacks. I was hoping he would hit me piecemeal like he has done in the past. I'm not going to get that lucky. Justin, if you're watching, thank you uh, for joining as a patron, as well as Barry. Thank you. George Thomas is about to purge Virginia like only a Virginian can. That's awesome. Uh, Mr. Willenshower, I'm hoping it'll be at least once every week with the streams, but we'll see. And I may squeeze some episodes in between just to, to keep it going so we don't have to wait a week between episodes. Holy cow, he is really coming at me here. We're going to try to counter this. I'm going to send these units on my left flank into reserve positions, put Gladden out on the flank, and hope that Early can hold on over here. Come on, Early, what are you waiting on? Fire. There he goes.
Colton, I appreciate that. I uh, I think very highly of JD and his channel. And as awesome as his channel is, he's an even better guy. He's just a fantastic guy. Super nice. Glad to call him a friend. What's for dinner? Uh, wedding. Wife and I, my cousin's getting married today, so we're going to be there. Actually, second straight weekend, uh, I have a cousin getting married. Let's pull Jackson back so he doesn't get wounded. Come on, early. Hang on, buddy. Professor what? Yeah, you know, he and I talked about that a long time ago, and we haven't talked about it since. We really need to do something together. All right, we drove one of them back. Drove two of them back. He's going to come over and start loading up on, on Early's Brigade now. Man, it's still going his way, though, even though we're mounting up the Union casualties. That Union casualties just went up rapidly right there. See, he outnumbers me pretty heavily. That's the problem is the percentage. There goes another one. All right, we're going to bring Lawton up right there. I'm going to send Gladden after these guns. Early has Enfield rifles, so he's one of the better equipped. Oh, no, come on. It's a major defeat in morale, even though we, we were holding and we were driving him back. Oh, but because we're playing on such a high difficulty level, uh, the odds are stacked against us on that stuff. My morale's still at 49. His is at 51. I don't understand why we broke. It's, it's got to be the percentage of losses. I lost 22%. He lost 19% of a bigger army. Uh, that's a little frustrating, but that's the way it goes early in the game especially. But I was about to turn his flank... I had driven him off. Oh. PvP would be awesome if they could ever make that happen in this game. All right, let's inflict some more casualties. That's what stinks. It's a major defeat, even though the casualties... I'm really doing a number on him here. Who was wounded? Gladden. Okay. Charge. All right. Huh. It's good in terms of numbers. We were just too heavily outnumbered and everything. Uh, let's look at the, let's look and see if there's any battle honors to be had on this one. First of all, we'll look at the combat report. Jackson's division does the most damage here. Specifically, we're looking at 2nd Virginia and the Anson County Congregation. Um, so 2nd Virginia loses 33% of their men. Anson County loses 20%. They inflict similar numbers of casualties. I think I'm going to give it to Polk's Boys, but let's look real quick, see if there's anybody else we should consider. No, nobody there. That's just a single brigade early is. So early's brigade by itself inflicted 1,200 casualties. So it might be them. Hunter Smith, thank you for that. I'll give it to both of them. So Anson County Congregation and Early's Brigade, both going to get a battle star for this one. My prediction for Ohio State Notre Dame tonight, 38-20, Ohio State. So we're going to, yeah, he got points for holding the objective too. We're going to wrap it up right here, guys. Thank you so much for joining this stream. Um, We'll be back real soon if you do want a unit in the game. Patreon link is in the description. Um, and it's uh, Captain Level on Up you get to request a unit. So 
We'll see you guys real soon. Thanks for watching.